four more years and far more tears. So that was it. Billions of dollars and so much effort only to continue the status quo, really. But in so doing, we've got to grasp the fact that the United States is now a fundamentally different country than ever before. Yeah, of course, two parties have pretty much divided the nation for generations. But within that division, generally, there was a consensus around what America was and, and, and should be. But not now, no longer. And I would say never again. It's now black and white, religious and secular, working for oneself and working for the state, north and south. With demographics as they are, it's difficult to see where and how the Republicans will ever be able to carve out a new coalition of support unless the party becomes something other than what it's supposed to be. Two moderate ersatz conservative candidates in succession have lost to a radical in radicals' clothing. And it's unclear if a genuine conservative could do any better. If the Republicans become a, a progressive conservative party akin to, I don't know, Britain's Tories, for example, well, the right will split. Unlike any other Western democracy, a quarter of America's population is religious, devout, and it'll form an alternative, an alternative party, rather than support a, a new morally liberal Republican entity. That would guarantee, of course, further Democrat presidents for a very long time. In terms of what it all means for policies, well, remember that while we don't know how many Supreme Court judges will die or retire due to ill health in the next four years, four of them are over 74 years of age. One is 76, I think, another 79. So there's a very good chance that one, if not two, will be replaced. The position is held for life, so these appointments are vital and profoundly important with elected representatives in Canada and the U.S. increasingly reluctant or in, unable to decide on moral issues without recourse to the courts, this means that subjects such as abortion and marriage will be decided by judges. The American government will now pursue same-sex marriage and, yes, intolerance for dissident views to a degree that will shock some of the more naive within the Christian and morally conservative community in the States. If you doubt me, look at the Canadian and the British experience. Abortion, contraception, euthanasia will be treated as self-evident truths and crucial elements in the civilized society that an unleashed Obama is committed to creating. Because of the federal nature of the United States, there will be resistance and local opposition, but the overall flavor of the country will change irretrievably. As with all things American, it concerns not just itself, but the greater world. In the paradoxical world of the liberal, forcibly exporting ideology to vulnerable foreign countries is seen not as imperialism, but as liberation. Then there is the culture of the, of the governing class. Look, whatever the failings of Republican presidents and earlier Democrat presidents, they maintained a certain ethical certainty within Washington political circles. Moral aspirations were still similar to those of a century earlier. So that even when individuals fell or failed, the established order held firm. But that established order is now entirely different. And Flamboyant actors will replace Christian ministers. Foul-mouthed pop stars replace mainstream authors at White House parties. It will be, as it were, not your mother and father's United States of America. The last best hope of Christians and conservatives has become a strange, blurred shadow of what it once was. Four more years. Oh, my God, four more years. Tonight... In this election, you, the American people, reminded us that while our road has been hard, while our journey has been long, we have picked ourselves up. We have fought our way back. And we know in our hearts that for the United States of America, the best is yet to come. What the hell did that mean? I'm sorry. I mean, I suppose I meant to sit here and say, that's so moving. It's not the Gettysburg Address, for goodness sake. What did that mean? Actually, if you want the truth about what's going on or not going on in American politics, I do recommend Breitbart.com, the website there. Uh, it, um, it, it's one of the boldest and bravest. Its editor-in-chief, Joel Pollock, joins us now from Los Angeles. Welcome to you, Joel. I know you must be very, very busy. Uh, I've asked this question to, to other people, but uh, what, what do you think happened? Because many conservatives, intelligent, informed conservatives, were predicting a Romney victory. Well, many of us were looking at models of turnout that had a stronger Republican presence and a weaker Democratic presence. It turned out that we were right in one sense that the Democrat presence was weaker 
than 2008. However, when many people came to the polls, the marginal voter, that is to say the person who had not yet decided that the economy was the most important issue and that they were going with Romney, was swayed by some of these social issues and other issues like that, the sort of small issues of the Obama campaign. And those things, it appears to be uh, the case, those are the things that swayed the Obama victory uh, by the margin that we now see in front of us. Mm -hmm. There's a lot of blame around today, obviously. I mean, some people are saying, well, the system isn't fair, the Electoral College. I think the Electoral College works fine. And anyway, as we stand now, uh, the popular vote still went uh, Obama's way. The popular vote went Obama's way, and there was quite a dramatic swing in the last 10 days. Many of the polls showed Romney gaining and building a significant lead right up until Hurricane Sandy. Not so much in the swing states, though, and those swing states are where Obama had focused his negative ad campaign, uh, his attacks on Romney's record at Bain Capital, his war on women ads, so to speak. So mm. Obama used his resources narrowly and wisely, it turns out, and did so at a time in the early summer when Romney didn't have the money yet to respond. So things seem to be going Romney's way, even in the, some of those swing states until Hurricane Sandy sort of came around. And I think a lot of people felt, well, maybe we do need the embrace of big government to help us. So the country we woke up in this morning is different than the country we went to sleep in on Monday night. But, uh, you know, it is a long struggle for those of us who believe in conservative ideals and the founding principles of this country. Mm. We're certainly headed in a different direction. But, uh, you know, it, it's uh, in some senses, I do agree with the president. The best days are ahead of us. They just may not be on his watch. <laughs> well, I certainly hope they are because there haven't been particularly good days up to now. But if, if it is a case of the the entitled class, the, the, the government class. I mean, you see this replicated in Europe, for example. If, if that group will always vote for the left of centre party, well, under that left of centre party, that group will increase in size. So uh, therein lies a problem. How will a Conservative or Republican ever win a presidential election? I think it has to be about the cultural battle and the media battle. Essentially, Republicans decided that this year the weapon of choice would be the super PACs that could go into swing states and pump political ads out that would swing the election in Romney's favor. Actually, we were playing all along on a battlefield that was not even, which is the cultural battlefield. And of course, there was media bias, as there always is, you know, the cover up of the Benghazi scandal, the inflation of everything Romney said into some sort of perceived gaffe, while anything Obama said was just played down and ignored. But really, the broader issue is the cultural battle, and that is the flight away from ideals of freedom in the last 20 years. Many Americans, I think, no longer believe that individuals can make it on their own. And we've come to embrace big government as the solution to many things. I say that with a great sense of disappointment. I really did think the American people uh, felt differently and certainly showed that they felt differently in 2010. But in trying economic times, even when some of those economic circumstances are created by government, I think some people cannot resist the promises of government to mm help you or at least the warnings of government that going with any alternative is worse. I think yeah. we've basically lost to some degree that extent that that sense of individual responsibility and individual destiny. Uh, certainly not everyone has lost it in America and many of us still believe in that. But it appears this morning to be the minority view. And those of us who believe in it very strongly are going to have to evangelize about it, essentially remind people of the principles and the ideas on which this country was founded, which are no longer, it seems, taken for granted by a majority of Americans. Yeah. Just very briefly, the last minute we, we have left, already people are thinking of for years ahead. Does the Republican Party try to become even more of the center, moderate, or does it go for a genuine conservative? This election wasn't about whether moderates or conservatives won or lost. You can find Tea Party candidates who lost and Tea Party candidates who did not. You can find moderates who lost, moderates who won. The real problem is the Republican brand itself. And when the Democrats added social issues, particularly abortion, into the mix and tarnished the party as a whole with the extreme views of one or two people, they were successful. And basically, the country is willing to believe any bad thing about Republicans. Essentially, the country doesn't like Barack Obama that much, but it knows that it doesn't like Republicans. It's yeah. not a moderate or, or conservative yeah. issue. It's a, it's a branding issue. Well said. Very well said indeed. And, and thank you for what you're doing. Thanks a lot. I know you're busy. Appreciate the time. You're welcome.